All right, we're going to see if we can teach you touch. Okay. Let me get my little finger clicker ready. All right. So I'm going to teach Nova to touch her nose. I know to my hand. There we go. What's that? Oh, good job. There you go. And this can be used as a recall. Oops, I clicked too early. Sorry. Hey, there you go. I'm just teaching her to touch my nose by clicking as she said. You don't want the piece? I know it's so distracting. There's birds and things, huh? There we go. So anytime she gets close to my hand, she's going to get a click and a treat. And my hand signal is just two fingers. I just threw a treat on the ground. Here we go. Oh, I know. I lost my balance. It's okay. I'm fine. You ready? Good girl. And I'm not adding any word to this yet because she's kind of just wandering around and it's just happening. <laughs> there we go, now you're starting to do it on purpose, huh? So this can be used if your dog is getting too much in your face. You can ask them to move further out or maybe you're trying to put their leash on and they're too far away and you need to bring them closer. Good job. Okay. There we go. And then sometimes it's hard to get them to follow you, especially if your dog has a tendency to sit a lot. So I'm going to practice backing up a lot. Do you want the piece? There you go. And so if the dog doesn't respond, I'm going to put my hand down. I'm going to start with my hand at my belly button, which may or may not be on screen. Um, hi. So I'll place my hand down and back up. And that's usually a good way to get them to move. I'll see. If I just stare at her, she's likely to sit. So she, usually she will do that. There we go. There we go. I didn't want to cue her to, although technically I did say it, but I don't want her breaking it if I haven't told her to. Hi. So she's distracted by crumb. This is a very crumbly treat. I'm going to try doing it from the side too. There we go. Good girl. Did you want a piece? So when it looks like she's doing it slightly more on purpose, there we go like that, I can start naming it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure she's looking at me and I'll say touch and then place my hand down. There we go. And click when she touches. Here's the touch. Good girl. And so you can also wear your puppy out, touch, by kind of playing chase like this. And this is, can be, if you have non-slip floors like carpeting, this can be a fun rainy day game. Because what I'll end up doing is I'll kind of play tag and I'll say touch, find it, and I'll leave the treats for them. And then I'll go run and hide in another room, touch. Good girl, find it. And then I'll go run and hide in another room, touch. toss those treats to keep them occupied long enough for you to get to the other room. There we go. The trick here though, is you don't want to repeat it. So if you place your hand and your dog doesn't respond, then you're going to bring your hand back to your belly button. Take a deep breath. Oh, you're excited. And the deep breath is both so you don't get tense um, if you're frustrated, but also to make sure that you take long enough time for them to kind of refocus and reset. Very nice. There we go. And then you can try again. So again, if you get stuck, or if your puppy gets stuck, just bring your hand back to center, take a deep breath, and then try again. Touch. Ooh. <laughs> you missed it, turned around. Touch. And eventually, you should be able to call it from even behind them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show her a treat that's on the ground, and while she eats it. Touch. Oh, I said it a little too soon, you're still chewing but you can wait until your puppy is facing the wrong direction. Right now she knows I have a bunch of treats, so it's hard to get her to face in the wrong direction unless I throw food. Can I go find it? Touch. Yeah, that was great, good job. Find it. Touch. Good girl, and she's also starting to reorient to me on her own. Do you wanna find it? All done, all done. And you can add distance to hide by throwing the treat out and having them go chase it. We'll find it. Ready? Find it. There you go. Touch. Yay, good girl. So you can toss a treat out to get more distance um, from your puppy, and you can also back up. And when you're first learning to add distance, I, hi, I do recommend um, backing up so they have to chase you. It makes it a lot more exciting to chase you than it is to come to you when you're stationary. That said, over time, you back up less and less and less until you kind of just stand there several feet away. Um, that's a beautiful new one. Go find it. I'm just going to stay where I am. Touch. Oh, yay. And tossing the 
treat out for them to chase does actually help quite a bit with building up the drive to run back. Get down and I'll sit on you, thank you. Right here, there you go. Very nice. And it is important to practice on your left, on your right, with both hands. Um, I've only demonstrated with my right hand for the moment. Hi, do you wanna see if you can remember it on the other hand? Oh good, that was very confident. A lot of times when you switch hands, they're like, that's something new, I've never seen this. There you go, very nice. And I like to do the two fingers because then they aren't bumping your hand all the time when your hand's just sitting there. Um, and it looks very different from like a stay um, or I usually use a weight like that. So it's two fingers. There we go, which is very, hi, hello, you forgot it. There you go. Uh, which is very distinct from the other hand signals. Are you all done? And again, that is great for a recall for getting closer, for getting further away, for just moving them. It's great for dogs who don't like being touched if they're lying down on like a couch um, or a bed or something. You can call them over to you with a touch instead of um, instead of grabbing them or like a dog who's hiding under a bed, you never wanna reach under there because that's a good way to get bitten. Um, so you can call them out that way. It can be a super fun game. You can also teach uh, your puppy different family members' names. So. Um, so for instance, I could call her to touch and then say Greg, and then Greg would call her to touch. And then Greg would say Sonia, and Sonia would call, you know, like you can just do that sort of thing and play, um, you call it the person's name and then, and then you call the puppy over and you can start really close together and gradually spread out. So that's a super fun game. Um, and it can also be used for getting confident with new situations. You can ask her to touch next to something um, that is new, make sure your dog isn't showing signs of avoidance, like they aren't trying to get away from it, but if they're just like, oh, I don't know what that is, that's weird, you can have them touch. It's also great for greeting because if you have a puppy who tends to jump up, you can place your hand low. We'll see if she'll come back over to say hi. Hi, sweetheart, hello! And I can bring the hand out to my side so that I'm not hovering over her or leaning over her. Hello, good job. And so that can be a great way to be able to smell the person. And over time, of course, they won't, the clicker wouldn't click. Um, they won't need the food because they'll understand the behavior, but that's a great way to create a behavior pattern of greeting from the side. Hi, there you go. Ready like this? You can touch and then I touch. You touch, I touch, huh? And so that's a great way to help with submissive urination. There you go, but also over excitement. If they tend to leap up in your face, that oftentimes does have to do with a little bit of lack of confidence. Um, there you go. And so just turning side to side can be really helpful. And especially if you've worked on touch, that's extra helpful because I can show them what to do where they touch you. And then here we go. And then we touch you, huh? All right. Thanks for the great video, Nova. That was very nice. I know I'm going to keep my hands very low to keep you low. Good job. Go find the crumbs.